What's going on everybody? Ronnie with Hager and I wanted to uh, get with you guys about putting together this financial focus group that I talked about on Facebook a couple months ago. Uh, I'm not a financial coach but I am a CPA and I've had a lot of opportunity to talk to people about their money, their businesses, their taxes, uh, what they're doing with their money, investment, all, all different types of stuff. We have a lot of different conversations that we have. And, I've had the good opportunity to work with people who are really good with money and I've been able to have the, the opportunity to talk to people who weren't really good with money. And, and what I have to say is probably most people aren't, aren't really good with money. It's not something that, that we're taught much about. It's not something that we talk a lot about. And so uh, I just kind of wanted to put together some, some information and, and give you guys some things that's really helped me. Uh, to be accountable and, and to understand uh, where my money was going, what my money was doing, and you know, put together a plan for, for our future and, and, and have an understanding of, of things. And so I kind of have this, this concept or this notion of, of knowing your numbers. And that, that notion kind of started uh, in tax for me when I was doing some somebody's tax return and uh, their bookkeeper gave me their books and I prepared their tax return, told them what their tax bill was going to be. And in, in the end, they said that that just can't be right. Uh, and, you know, we sat and kind of talked about how that couldn't be right. And I said, well, if you have any issues, it has to be in, in a couple of these areas. So anyways, they went back with the bookkeeper, ended up checking it out. They found mistakes and we were able to save a, a five digit uh, number when it came to taxes. And, you know, it was all because that individual really just kind of knew their numbers. They, they had a, a, a piece of their mind that, that was not necessarily doing the books or in the books, but knew enough about their financial situation that they knew that their business had made right around a certain amount. So, you know, I've always really kind of tried to push that with, with people because a lot of people don't like to do their bookkeeping. And you know, a lot of times the, these types of things are taboo. We don't talk about it a lot. And especially husband and wives, money is something that people fight about. And so this concept of knowing your numbers is something that we really have to train ourselves to to be a part of because in the end, it, it really can save us, not just in taxes, but uh, in, in our personal in our personal marriages and with our personal happiness, with goals that we have for the future and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, I have some, some things that I've been kind of putting together for, uh, you know, probably the last 10 years or so uh, in our financial journey. And I just thought I, I would be really happy uh, to, to share those things and, and help you guys kind of get on a path of really knowing your numbers and, and knowing where you stand, knowing where your money's going and, and having some accountability for, uh, for what you're doing with, with your cash. And, you know, this is just such an important part of life. I know that the money, you know, doesn't buy happiness, but I also know not having money, uh, it, affects your happiness. And so, you know, you can have all the money in the world and still be unhappy. You also can have not a lot of money and still be happy. But I do know that this is a very uh, specific point of pain for, for a lot of people. So uh, the, the concept of knowing your numbers is going to take probably a couple hours of work on the front end for, for you. Okay. And, and then once you put that upfront time into, uh, you know, putting together a budget, uh, going through uh, your bank statements and your credit card statements and getting a little understanding. It's probably going to take you about one to two hours uh, a month to maintain uh, this, uh, this stuff that I'm going to give to you. All right. So let's kind of jump into it. The first thing that you're going to do uh, as you're listening to this and, and what you're going to see is kind of the big picture, but you're going to have this specific action item uh, at the end. And, and this specific first action item is going to be for you to go print out three months of bank and credit card statements. 
you're going to go get your last three months of bank and credit card statements and you're going to go through every single line and you're going to categorize those lines you're going to categorize what it is whether it's your mortgage your phone bill your internet it could be your car payment your car insurance it, you're going to categorize out every one of those things and you we're going to start putting it into a uh, a nice spreadsheet here and and i'm going to kind of show you this this spreadsheet and uh get my mug off the camera here but uh <clears throat> i'm going to show you kind of this spreadsheet and and, and you're going to build out a spreadsheet that looks like this. The first thing that you're going to need to do, though, before you get overwhelmed by a spreadsheet, I know a lot of people might not like a spreadsheet or, you know, I've never filled something like this out before. But the first thing you're going to do is just print those statements and take a pen and write down next to every single one of them what something specifically was. OK, and, and what you're going to be doing as you go through this is you're going to start recognizing wow we spend a lot of money on food oh wow like we did a lot of online shopping last month or oh wow we uh we spend a lot of money on credit card payments you know it you're gonna start figuring that stuff out what's gonna happen naturally is as you're going through all that sort of stuff you're gonna see where your money's going uh, because you're actually writing it down and, and putting this all together now you know, I can, I, I do want to say this. I mean, I'm sure that people who are listening to this might be somewhat similar to me. Uh, for for probably 90% of my marriage, I, I feel like I've checked the bank account like pretty much every day and just, you know, looking and, and checking it. And I, I know people are kind of type A like that who are probably listening to this. They check their bank account a lot. You, you literally might be thinking in your head, well, I know where our money goes. All right, but realistically, if you want to be accountable with this, you've got to print out those bank statements and you have to put the pen next to it and write down what it is. I know you don't really actually know how much you spend on restaurants every month. You don't, all right? And, and you don't really know where your waste is right now. And so putting together something like this is really going to help us understand where some of our, uh, where some of our opportunity kind of lies in. All right, so about my spreadsheet here. Once you go through and you identify all your spending, and, and I use three months, just as you know, rolling three months kind of gives us a little bit of an op an idea. If you want to be really uh, ambitious and, and you want to do a year of it and, and see where all your spending goes for a year, uh, you go for it. I mean, the more time that you kind of put into you know, creating your your spending sheet here, it, it, and the longer you go back, the more accurate your monthly number really is going to be. Okay, so uh, you know what you can kind of see here from my spreadsheet is I start out with fixed bills. All right, fixed bills are going to be the money that you are definitely going to spend. It's locked in. It's a hundred percent. This is your actual monthly payment. All right. So, you know, this could be mortgage or it could be your, your rent. Uh, you got your phone bill, you got internet, you got car insurance, car payments, student loans, credit cards, life insurance. Maybe you got a security system on your house. Maybe you're putting some money away for your kids' college plans. Uh, you got subscription type stuff like Hulu and Netflix and uh, Adobe and data storage for pictures. Uh, maybe you got kids that are in lessons and preschool. That's going to be your monthly fees. Now, you might have something else that, that is in this. And if you do, that's totally fine. All you got to do is add a row here. You just add a row and, and, and stick it in there for whatever you have is fixed bills. I know people are going to have, you know, cable bills and, you know, different types of things that, that they have to pay on a monthly basis. So, you know, get to know what your fixed bills are. That's kind of like, hey, I have to make $3,151 just to make, you know, my normal monthly fixed bills work out. Okay. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. All right. I've got variable bills next. These are your bills that are going to change on a monthly basis. But when they do change, uh, you know, you, you at least kind of want to get an average of what those are going to be. And that's why I kind of did the three month thing and created an average here. 
All right, this is going to be your water bill, your energy, your gas bill, maybe your charitable donations vary month to month, your grocery, your restaurant, your gas, entertainment stuff. This is, you know, going out on the town, whatever you're doing for entertainment, taking the kids to the bounce house, uh, whatever that might be. Uh, this is out of pocket health costs. Some of you guys might have health insurance broken uh, broken out on here too in, in, in you know the fixed cost section. Uh, my health insurance just comes right out of my check, so um, you know it's kind of an automatic type thing. So I didn't put it here, but you might have some out of pocket stuff for prescriptions and things like that. And then there's a household thing for clothing or you know running to Walgreens, you know, just something like that. So. What I did here was kind of put these variable items here because these are the ones that 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 can change. All right. These are the ones that can change on a monthly basis. So, you know, when you kind of go through and you're looking at your budget as a whole here, you're kind of looking at it. And I, you know, added the fixed and the and the variable. And I'm like, OK, in order for me to live this lifestyle right here, I have to make about five thousand one hundred dollars a month. And then my annual income would have to be $61,000 ish. Okay. And it's probably a little more than that because taxes are going to come out, things like that. But, you know, I got to be in that ballpark. If I'm not making 61,000, okay, I got a problem, right? I got a problem. I'm going to save, you know, that type of conversation for another day. Uh, and talk to you guys more about you know what happens if you have a problem. I'm going to do that probably on the next on the next webinar. But what I want you to really focus on right now, and kind of catch my vision here, is number one, go through your bank statements, list it all out. Then when you go from your bank statements, tally everything up and bring it to this. You're going to bring it to this spreadsheet so that you could see. Now. At the bottom line, if you notice, hey, I'm spending $5,100 a month, but I only make $55,000 a year, that's an issue. On the flip side, if you're like, hey, I'm living off of $61,000, but I make $80,000, all right? Then you're really kind of like, well, wait, where's my, where's the extra money going? Like, what did I, what am I missing here? All right. So you get a little bit of opportunity for analysis here when, when you kind of get to this point. So now you can kind of see, OK, I have this budget. Right. And once you kind of have this budget, now, you know, your numbers, you're saying, OK, I know what we're spending our money on now. You could look through this and you can say, hey, some of this stuff might be ridiculous. OK, why am I spending so much money on? uh going to restaurants every month or why am i spending so much money at the grocery store uh you know maybe you know my why why is my ther uh thermometer set to uh 73 in the house like maybe i should jack that thing up to to 80 and um you know get my my energy bill down uh you know oh maybe i do have netflix and and hulu uh, but you know, I really only need Netflix, so I'm going to cancel Hulu and, or maybe in place of that, you have a dish network and you got a $200 cable bill. I seen somebody, you know, complaining about that on online the other day. And, and, you know, maybe you're going to cancel your dish network and go to YouTube TV or, or something like that. So, you know, there's going to be some things where you're going to really be able to sit down with your spouse and you're going to be able to say, okay. We have areas where we can improve and having those areas where you can improve and having that conversation, I know it's going to be difficult. I know it's going to be hard and, you know, because, and, and who knows, it, it really might actually start some, some, it might start a little bit of an argument, but I promise you, promise you, promise you, this is one step backwards, two steps forward, 10 steps forward, 15, 20 steps forward. You will notice it right away. And as long as the conversations are loving, as long as the conversations are, uh, you know, meant with the same vision and values that, uh, that going forward, I, I guarantee you that this is going to work so well. All right. So now you have your monthly budget. So let's say you do this for June. 
and you're looking at it and you're like, okay, I'm excited. All right. I noticed that maybe I've spent, you know, too much money at the grocery store. We're really going to try and limit that. Well, now when July comes around, you do the same thing. You print your July statements. Okay. And once you print your July statements, then you just go through. And what I usually do is I just put all the numbers in right next to everything. And then I'm like, well, how did I do? How did I do on each one? Oh, you know what? Why? Usually the fixed stuff stays pretty much consistent, but then you get into your variable stuff and you're like, well, oh, why did I spend so much? Why do we spend so much money at restaurants? Like, oh, we bought dinner for, you know, our entire family once and it cost $180. So, you know, we were way over budget on that one. Why, why is our fuel cost so bad? Well, oh, it's June and we drove to Utah or we drove up to Wyoming or, you know, something like that and spent a lot more money on gas. Uh, there's going to be stuff like that where you're going to be able to look at it and say, well, these are our, these are our reasons we shouldn't have done that. Now, I'm not a Dave Ramsey. I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not a financial coach. And so there's going to be other people who have other ideas that you're going to be able to add to on this. I know there's some people that do, uh, you know, cash envelopes. Maybe you try that out. Maybe you try out some cash envelope stuff. Uh, if swiping your card's a problem, uh, you know, maybe you throw a couple of your credit cards in the drawer. Uh, there's going to be some ideas like that, that you've probably read about, that you, you, you probably are well aware of, that, that you might be able to implement on some of this. But again, I'm focusing on knowing your numbers. Now you know your numbers. You know, when you go through your July statement, you're already going to be used to it. It's going to take you an hour to do it. You're going to go through an hour, tally everything up. And, and you'll be able to kind of see. Now, what's going to get you exciting, excited is when you set some goals, okay? If this is your lifestyle and you're like, you know what, let's try to cut our grocery bill down a hundred bucks a month, okay? When you do that and then you did save the hundred dollars and you win on that, maybe you bring that hundred dollars up to your credit card, all right? And you make an extra payment to your credit card. All right. Now I'm going to show you something that's going to increase your accountability. All right. And again, this is a, you know, I drew out the statement here. Don't get overwhelmed. But what I want to show you is a net worth statement. I've done a net worth statement every month for probably seven years. And when I first started my net worth statement, it was negative. Okay. We, it, we were in the hole. It was we had no net worth, okay? We're young, poor, married, uh, you know, been there, done that. So if you, I'm sure of it, you, you know this. And so, uh, you know, net worth, this is a little bit more into the, you know, the accounting side of things. There's gonna be people who are, are gonna look at this and they're gonna say, I don't know what assets are. I don't know what liabilities are. Well, I'm gonna teach you. Um, uh, an asset is, it's something positive to you. It's something that uh, it's the green, uh, not the red. Uh, I'm trying to put it into some simple terms for you. This is something that generates value uh, if you were to to get rid of it or sell it. Uh, so, you know, layman's terms, liabilities, that's the red. That's bad. Liabilities are, are debts that you owe, credit cards, student loans, uh, things like that. All right. Pick a day on a month. All right. On any given day, on any month. Again, this is going to take you another hour. OK, but what you're going to do is you're going to go through. I'm just going to have you kind of look at this for a second and kind of, uh, you know, take it in a little bit here. But you're going to go through and you're going to log into your bank account. And, uh, and you, I picked the fourth because that's right after the, the mortgage comes out. But what you're going to do is you're going to go through your bank account and you're going to put how much money is in your checking and your savings account. You're going to go to Zillow and you're going to or Redfin and you're going to see how much your house is worth. You're going to log into your retirement account and you're going to see how much is in there. You're going to go to kellybluebook.com and you're going to check how much your vehicle is worth. You're going to log into Robinhood or Acorns and you're going to see how much your stock accounts are worth. You're going to figure out a value if you were to sell all your furniture you're going to figure out how much your electronics are worth if you have a stamp collection you're going to 
try to you know estimate what that's worth if you have college kids savings plans you're going to put that in there if i know all you guys probably have somebody in your family who owes you money uh you're going to put the money that they owe you in there if you have a rental property you're going to go look that up if you have a business bank account you're going to go look that up all right once you get really good at this it's going to it really actually take you about 10 15 minutes to go through and see okay and every single month when you do this you're gonna think oh this is overkill this i know it i already know you like you're gonna think ronnie's a geeky accountant he loves numbers way too much and this is overkill okay but i i can tell you that nothing will hold you more accountable and get you more excited about your financial future than seeing it change Okay, I was a guy when I came out of college, we had, me and Shannon had $60,000 in student loan debt. All right, and I won't tell you the breakdown between whose it was, but we had $60,000 in student loan debt. And uh, we have zero student loan debt today. Okay, none. Um, we had credit card debt. And we had all the stuff, okay? We had all the stuff. And putting something together like this is what really, like it gave us so much motivation to, to pay it off, okay? Log into your home loan, look at your home loan, go to your credit cards, look at what your balances are, figure out your student loans, figure out your car loans. Please don't have any payday loans. Uh, if you have medical debt, I mean, I just put some things in here. At the end of the day, we have a net worth. This is if you were to sell everything and pay off all your debts and go travel the world, this is how much money you would have in your pocket to be able to go do that, okay? Do this every single month. Once you start doing it, what you're gonna see, what you're gonna see is that things are gonna start to change, all right? You might say, oh, well, hey, how come our cash went, or how come our total assets went down this month? Well, you know, then you kind of look at it. Well, I'm down a little bit in my checking account. Our personal residence went up, so that doesn't make sense. Well, my retirement account went down because, you know, the stock market kind of took a hit because of COVID a couple months ago. Um, you know, different things like that, what you're going to see, okay? And then, you're going to start making some goals. Okay. Well, okay. When we save a little bit of money, what we're going to do is we're going to start paying our credit cards down. Okay. Here's our discover card. Hey, let's put a little extra money towards our discover card every month. All right. Look, our total liabilities, our total liabilities went down 1500 bucks last month. Okay. You start formulating some of this stuff. You start thinking about it a little bit different and then you're like, okay, all right. So, you know, my liabilities are going down. I'm paying my credit card off. You know, I'll kind of show you here over a six month period. Okay, the Discover card is completely paid off. Okay, I'm so excited for that win. What am I going to focus on next? Well, let's go to the Visa card next and start paying down that Visa card. You're going to start formulating this kind of stuff. You're going to start understanding it really well. And this concept of knowing your numbers and being really, really, really in charge of your financial position, your financial situation is going to be something that is super positive. Okay. And, and you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So, um, this is something that might seem crazy, but I do, I spend an hour on the fourth of every single month doing it. And I watch my net worth grow. My net worth grows almost every single month because I've done this, okay? And I can't, I can't, I don't say it to brag. Uh, it's just being in charge of it, being responsible for it, being accountable for it. And when the only way to be in charge, to be accountable, to be responsible is to spend time focused on it. And if you spend time focused on it, you won't have any excuses. All right, right now, when people come into my office, they have a lot of excuses. A lot of excuses why their financial situation is not taken care of. In America, we make so much money. We make plenty of money, 
plenty of money to be able to do the things that we want to be able to do. And you know what? I just found my our first tax return when me and Shannon were first married. We we're making like twenty nine thousand bucks or something like that. And we were still paying down our student loan. We were still doing stuff to help our financial situation. And, and laying that groundwork, laying that foundation is so important. It doesn't matter how old you are either. You can start doing this at any time. It's really just a matter of figuring out a way to live within your means and figuring out how to uh, have those conversations with your spouse, with whoever the one that spends the money in the family is, and, and really kind of do that. Now, you know, I will admit, like in our family, like Shannon's not super involved in this, um, but she knows, she knows about it. And if something was concerning about the, uh, you know, what we were doing in here or how this was working, it's really easy for us to talk about it. And, and that's what we need to get in our relationships is we need to get to where it's easy to talk about the financial side of things. And, and, and I really do know that that's possible. And, and, and I know that uh, we can really, if we put that time and effort into it, this is gonna make sense. Now, this is just one uh, of the, the thoughts that I have about this focus group. Our focus group and, and the videos that, that I'm gonna post, uh, I've already kind of talked to you about uh, a little bit about, you know, when you're in trouble on certain stuff, kind of what we're going to do. I'm going to do a video on that. I'm going to do a video about uh, getting out of debt and, and making a plan to, to get out of debt. Uh, that will involve figuring out how to trim some of the fat in, in your budgets. And so if you're not doing that on your own already, I'll do another video on that. If there are other specific things when it comes to finances that you want me to do videos about, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to share this uh, workbook that I have with, with anybody who listens to this. So if you leave me a comment uh, and, and let me know that you want it, I will uh, get in touch with you and, and get your email address or, you know, you might not want to publicly share your email address, but get in touch with me and and, and tell me that you want it. And, and I'm happy to share this with you. And a lot of it's already formulated, uh, the workbook. So you're just going to have to type in numbers is all you'll have to do. Uh, I also would like to invite everybody that listens to this to, to like my YouTube channel and subscribe to it so that you'll see uh, the other videos that I'm going to do. Anyways, I really appreciate everybody. I think this is a lot of fun and, and I want to do more of it. I will, you know, right now this might seem kind of basic uh, for some people who are listening. I'm going to build this out into uh, how to grow your wealth too. And, and I'll do more about stock trading. I'll do more about real estate investing. I'll do more about building businesses and, and things like that. So uh, anyways, I uh, really appreciate all of you guys. I hope everybody has found this helpful and I hope that uh, you guys will subscribe to my channel and that uh, this has been something that's been educational. So I don't want to take too much time. I know that uh, everybody's time is really valuable. So I uh, hope everybody has a great one. Thanks so much for listening.